everybody and welcome to episode 68 of Run to the Hills. This week we chat with, with Meryl Cooper, GB International, um, and we learn all about how she trains, all about her move to Scotland, her races this year and her hopes for the future. So that's a really fun chat we have with Meryl a bit later on the show. All right, Gary, I just said to Gary, you look like something from uh, Made in Essex. He's got like an orange tinge today. All right, Twinkle. That's all right, Twinkle. What's <laughs> up? What is up? What is up? Yeah, well, fine, actually. Not a lot of running. I did run, which as I was out there running with Rex, I thought, oh, I shouldn't be running yet. But um, <laughs> I think Wednesday, I think I went out for a run, so that was quite early. But I feel okay, apart from I've got a really stiff neck. I, I've just, I, I nodded off. Uh, I think this happened in Valencia, actually. I nodded off just on the Sunday and woke up and I thought, oh, my neck's not feeling great. And it's progressively oh, no. got worse and worse over, oh, the, no. over the week. Um, and it's still here now uh, where we're at Monday. So it's not, yeah. It's oh, If when I'm on the running with the dog, I quite often have to look over my shoulder, see if a bike's kind of and you just can't. upon us. Y- y- I have to stop and do a full body. Yeah. Full I always body know that's time to go and see my chiropractor when I hear something coming and I'm like, Turn the whole body. I've got to turn the whole body. You, do, you, do you ever go and see the chiropractor? No, 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 I don't. don't oh, do no, no, none of that shenanigans. It, it's a bit too alternative for me. That's the old. Uh, oh, my God. I love it. Like every about like every six weeks and he is brutal and he just goes yeah. crack on my back. It it's always like, reminds me. Have you seen a film called Jacob's Ladder? No. It's quite dark. It's about... Oh. Uh, Soldiers being experimented on with LSD in Vietnam and kind of. Oh yes, it's one of my top top yeah, five. Yeah. That one. <laughs> well, there's a there's a person in the film who's a chiropractor. It's not a negative uh, relationship with with the main uh, Tim Robbins. Actually, he's a good actor. Um, but yeah, I just I just remember. Well, to, yeah. Take that out of your mind, and can I just say that like my chiropractor saves me. Like every yeah, when I get to that like oh I can't turn, yeah. and then they just go and he goes, well, he's Australian. He goes, relax, it. He just like it. Breath <laughs> smash, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I'd worry if I was there on the you wouldn't, you wouldn't survive it, you wouldn't no, survive. No. I'll just right. start dribbling, <laughs> but other than that, oh, Sedgefield, how he is the oh, it's a long North East Counties XC champs, and I was a bit of a floater and I ended up on the car Ooh. park. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, I ended up in the car park and it started off nice and relaxed, a couple of cars streamed in, and then we got to a point where it was like. One in, one out. <gasps> That's quite stressful. Do people get is... car park rage? And you were like, no, just go. Uh, there was, you know, there's a couple of people, I suppose, they were maybe a little bit late for their race, so they're a bit uh, anxious, but no, no car park rage. But my goodness me, it was pretty stressful. My watch um, beeps when I've done the steps you're supposed to do in the day. Yeah. I, think, I think I'd done that by about 8.30. <laughs> I was legging it around. But uh based on Saturday night, and what I'm doing, I'm slowly ticking all the little... Things that I, you know, deny or, 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 or control when I'm training. So I've done my fish and chips. I've had some donuts. I've had, I've, I've had some beers. I had I'm a, mad. Ooh. You're mad, Gary. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I'm just ticking all the boxes. Lots of Spanish chocolate. Oh, my goodness, mate. It's quite nice. I didn't think the Spanish were kind of famed for their chocolate. But, um, yeah, really, really nice. And I think... No, there's something else. There's a big thing you haven't mentioned. Oh my goodness! I'm oh my that, goodness! Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't miss this, Al. This is huge. This is huge. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really, really fortunate. Uh, Central Harry's do the annual award, and I couldn't go because it was Neil's, um, my friend, he 50, 51st birthday drinks on the Saturday evening. So the two things clashed. So I couldn't go, but I was awarded the individual performance of the year for my successful Bob Graham round. <laughs> I mean, was that worth it? Was that was that worth it? All that pain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pain? What did you get for the award? Well, I've not got it yet, but I'm pretty sure it would be like you know the old fashioned kind of plaques where you get <gasps> the little and you get your name engraved on it. Yeah, so I'll get to keep that for a year. Um, wonderful, you know. And I'm feeling a, feeling a bit sorry for myself after my. I know it was a good run, but my two seconds still niggled me. And then just as I was down, I got a positive. Oh. Just to drag me up again. So, yeah, really, really, um, just to see the Facebook post come up. Because normally, I think in the past, they they ask you if you're going to go to the awards. And you kind of think, oh, I might be on for something here. Uh, I love that. <laughs> and I never got asked. <laughs> so, 
I just didn't, yeah, I just completely didn't um, expect anything. I, and you know, when you, you, you see what the, the awards are, there's a guy, I'll give him a shout, a guy called David Bentley who did uh, Sub 250 at London. Uh, and, and, you know, a real, just, uh, you see how he's improved his performance over the years. And yeah, just lots and lots of kind of commitment to training. And I just thought, hey, oh, David Bentley's got the individual performance of the, of the year. And then I just didn't expect it. I saw my name on the on the list. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness, I was pretty blown, blown away. That's, so, yeah, wonderful, wonderful night that was. Uh, well deserved, well deserved. It's a shame Neil's not a, a Sedgefield Harrier. Because, yeah, I didn't want to ask. I was like, oh, did yeah, you? Yeah, know? we did it together. So I kind of feel like, it, you know, he, he, he should have his name on it too, but he's not a Harrier. So, but uh, yeah, we did it. It was great. And you come on then. Yeah, I've been doing a little bit every day now, getting back into it. I've been oh I've been down gym, been down the gym, can you tell? Well, I wanted to ask you what what the hell is a battle rope? Oh so I I decided in my like off season, I thought, oh, I'll go and join in this strength class. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I went in and all these instruments of torture all out all over the gym. Um, and well, basically they're big black, you know, like the ropes when you're at school that hung down from the gym that yeah. always were against the wall and nobody ever got out because yeah. the gym teachers were sco- too scared <laughs> to get any of the apparatus out. Um, well, they're like that, but you have them on the floor attached. Oh, to you do that. You do you, that. You like wet, just wave them. Oh my God. They're one of my favorite things. Ooh, they're yeah. the ultimate like, uh, <laughs> anti-running because you can't well you go in like a squat position and then you wave your arms around basically it's pretty much my running (laughs) (laughs) like phoebe and friends uh (laughs) so i've done a few of those i've started my little weights winter program um you know i love it because i go in the gym and i don't do a lot of more mainly i just do my strength and stuff here so i've got some kettlebells but a lot of it is just like body weight and yeah. I do a lot of pilates as well but went in the gym and i was like oh i'm much stronger cool. much stronger than i think i than i thought i'd be like oh this is gonna be this is gonna be too heavy but um i reckon all the mountain sport i do makes my upper body and oh, the legs wow, are yeah. pretty, pretty strong anyway. So I started on a little bit of the weights. I'm going to start, build it a little bit more again this week. And then after Christmas holidays, I'll be a bit more rigid in my strength training. Yeah. Thought yeah, I'd like do that. a little bit more running this week, you know, just out with the dogs. But we have had, I've sent you a few pictures, the most amount of snow last week I've ever seen in my life. My neighbor's ever seen, and he's... Um, for the last 40 years, I can't remember this much snow in oh, 40 really, years. Yeah. <laughs> we had so much snow that with the snow plow, like normally when we have snow, the snow plow is like coming up and down. And so the road's a bit dodgy sometimes if the snow plow hasn't been, but yeah. it's not too bad. But we had so much snow, the snow plows couldn't cope. <sighs> People couldn't cope driving. I mean, so like the school run, I mean, normally it would take me like five minutes. Yeah. It took me an hour and a half. Oh my goodness. Because you couldn't drive. Everybody drives like maniacs. (laughs) It's legal requirement now in France where we are that you have to have winter tires and you have to have snow change in your car. Um, But the roads were so so much snow, people just crashing everywhere. By the time I'd done the Friday school run, which took me about three hours, um, my actual shoulders were sore from gripping (laughs) the steering wheel. So tight. And the car, the van's going, and and the kids are going, so mum, so mum, let me get home. Can we get home? Like, oh my God, you can't talk to me while I'm driving. And this car's like, start sliding towards you. I'm pretty proud. I only had one massive skid, um, and I had my middle in the front next to me, and it was a real like the 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 van went, and we were going down the hill, and I just had to like let the steering wheel go, and I was yeah, like. Yeah. I was trying to like use my core to like bring it. I was like, bring it back, bring it back. And he was like holding the roof going, mom, is this it? Are we sliding? And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Anyway. Oh, wow, um, idiots. Yeah, it was, it was really, and it was so hard because the life carries on and trying to get kids to their activities and you have to give yourself all this extra time. And then every time you go out, there's like heart stopping moments. I need Uh, silence. 
Well, when it's a stress stress car situation. Yeah, or total silence. Silence Just windows me. down. There were actually one, the last drive back on the Friday night where we'd had, it had literally snowed the whole day. The snow was above my shoulders outside. That is how much snow we had. Awesome. And I, I put on a bit of classical music because I was like, okay, I'm just going to breathe. I'm going to breathe all the way home and just relax. So, um, yeah. And then the kids started skiing. And of course, it was just carnage because the whole of France decided that they haven't been skiing for two years. So they want to come skiing. Yeah. And the, oh, I can't, the stress of it was just, it was great, a lot. Great Instagram pictures, though. <laughs> so there's not been a lot of running. I, d- I just said to you, I just tried to take the dogs out for a little um, half an hour run. I got 3K because by the time I got over the bridge onto the track and I thought, oh, a few people have been there, but it's yeah. so deep. If you missed a footprint, someone had trodden in and then oh, you went, wow. ee- it doesn't matter, does it? It's all fun really? games. <laughs> I remember when we first moved here, I got really stressed about it and be like, oh my God. And now I'm like, I'm going to go with it. Go with it. I'm going to get back um, get back on my skis a bit more this week now. I, I did, I'm a bit more cautious than a lot of people. It was avalanche risk five out of five, which is oh. really, really dangerous. Okay. Bryn went and walked the dogs and a tree just fell down like right in front of them. It was really funny. He said, you know, the dogs, they were just walking behind me because there was like one little single track yeah. of snow cleared. And he was like, they just were going behind me. And I was like, come on, go on, oh, go run, run. And he said... Um, and suddenly there was a crack and a tree fell in front of us. And if they hadn't been behind me and I hadn't stopped, yeah. that tree would have gone. Like, oh, those dogs. Oh. So, yeah, I'm not, I didn't go, I didn't ski. I ski once last week, but I don't take any risks. Yeah. Mainly because I wouldn't want to be the person that calls out the emergency services in that yeah. sort of snowstorm yeah. yeah. to go, I know you said it was Avalanche 5.5 and you shut all the roads up to the ski resort, yeah. but I still right. went and can you come and get me now? I would just be <laughs> so embarrassed. Exactly. So yeah. I and dangerous it. too. My goodness me, I think it was this time last year. There was some... People when they shouldn't have even been, I think we were in yeah, lockdown. They were camping, in the UK, didn't they? And they were hell And you know, I don't know the situation with one of the the rescue guys, but I guess I think it was life changing injuries that guy. Yeah, said. yeah. Serious, yeah. I see people still go out, and I think that's selfish. That's really, really selfish for when, especially with us, when you've got the rest of the winter. Mm. to enjoy the snow just just enjoy the snowfall stay yeah, in yeah. the fire so yeah that was that was the excitement of this week um so i will try and do a little oh, bit more exercise rex this week and oh, rex Rexy. oh no it's gonna inter no not, not a visual interruption he's not had a run yet Oh, that's my fault because I made you record this at like <laughs> six o'clock in the morning. Um, and then what else did I do? Oh, kids had their annual Christmas show. Love it. I love a dancing tinsel. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's always the three-year-olds causing carnage. Uh, Everyone filming it. Everybody's filming and there's always the, like, uh, the one child that's crying and someone else needs a wee. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, and then after that, I went out for my, well, actually, it's my second annual night out this year because I have been out for a one night out before. <laughs> went out with my mates and uh, then mate's birthday, had a few fizzy bops, maybe. Some people would call it a few fizzy bops too many. I wouldn't, <laughs> Gary. Uh, and, I'd love uh, to see this side of Eddie. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, dancing has been banned in France. Has it been banned in the UK? So you can go into a bar, you can go to a disco, but you're not yeah. allowed to dance. Oh, right. What the hell? So this was a private party, it just in a, a bar. It was just yeah. us and so and just women, you can imagine. Yeah. And uh, we weren't allowed to dance, though. So there was a lot of shoulder shaking <laughs> and moving and grooving. So uh, I love it. And I, I, I don't drink at all. I don't drink even at home. Not, not for... Not well for health reasons, I guess. Well, I'm just not that you know, I've done my drinking days, but um, I love I love a party, I love going out, and I have no problem in as my mum would say, pouring alcohol down your throat. It's not funny or clever, <laughs> but I think it's great. And then I enjoyed a very snowy long walk home because hey. there's no taxis, yeah. um, with a mate, and it was a beautiful night, the stars are out. And what normally takes me about 10 minutes to run took us about two and a half hours to oh, walk wow. home. You can imagine. <laughs> so fun. But I love doing that sort of stuff because yeah. our lives are very dull normally, aren't they? We're just running, training. We love it. You know, yeah. we won't complain. But I do love, I love going out and just having fun. And I don't have any problem with that. But then I, I 
paid for it. You were WhatsApping me with all this work you're going to be doing. And yesterday, I mean, I was useless. Poor Bryn. I was just like, can I have crisps? Uh, I just have crisps. And he was like, do you want a cup of tea? And I was like, oh, oh no. Do you have a Coke? Oh, wow. <laughs> you must have been bad. <laughs> anyway, I woke up this morning. Was up at six, laundry done, floor hoovered, dishwasher unpacked. I was like, Bryn, I'm back. I'm back. back. <laughs> I'm back. Anyway, won't be doing that again for a It's while. great, but sometimes I think, um, oh, I'm not going to drink anymore. But then I think I'll barely... Well, yesterday I was like, I'm never drinking, I'm never drinking again. <laughs> but I barely drink, so it's like, well, what's the point of giving up something you do maybe like once a month? Let's talk some people that actually have done some proper exercise and races. Yeah, I saw a race called the West Wittering Beach Run, and that's 15k, pretty much out and back on the beach down there, and it's part of the Chichester harbour trail run series and i've got real fond memories of uh camping long weekends away down at west Wittering. so i saw that and i thought oh yeah i'll give that a shout out and chris west took the win in one hour and one minute and 28 seconds and ruth briggs took the win for the ladies in one hour and six minutes we had the petzl night runner grisdale um this must do you reckon is this a 10k 38 yeah. 48 uh, winner Luke Turner and forty six fifteen by Jill Molyneux with a head torch. Hilly. Cool. Hilly. Hilly and head torch, my perfect yeah. race. It's nice actually, Grisdale, uh, <clears throat> the park around there. Really, really good. I remember before I was kind of adventurous in the lakes, we head to those kind of places and uh, you get a great walk out. But um, yeah, really nice around there. Well done. This week's guest is Meryl Cooper. She's a health and lifestyle coach, GB athlete, and she's recently moved back to scotland yeah i wonder how she's feeling with the temperature <laughs> i saw an instagram or uh, strava post of a, a very yeah. snowy hilly run she was enjoying it though <laughs> yeah it was great to have a chat with meryl actually um yeah i hope you enjoy it Hi, Meryl. Welcome to the podcast. Where are you? How, are you? How are you? And have you been for a run today? Hi there. Um, yeah, so I am good. I'm uh, currently in Scotland, up in Aberdeenshire. Um, and yeah, I've been for a run today. I did a quite a big, well, not, not a really big run or anything yesterday, but a little bit um, bigger than what I've been doing for a while. So the legs just were happy to be running flat and easy today. <laughs> yeah, what was yesterday's run? I'm really curious. I love. Uh, um, I don't really go on Strava that often, so apologies if I've not seen it um, on no. Strava. But what would yeah, what would your Sunday long run be like? Well, at the moment, it's at the moment it's just around kind of two hours, two and a half. But we've got a puppy arriving on Wednesday, so kind of decided. I need to go out and do a decent long run <laughs> because not really going to be able to go and travel far, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, basically we went to, we went for a, I think about three and a half hours, but went and um, bagged a few Munros, did four oh, awesome. Munros in in the run, which was ace. Um, yeah, just just near Braemar, started there, kind of this area, Loch, Loch Calater, um, and it was it was awesome and a thousand meters yeah Ooh. and is that um i'm getting really ahead of myself sorry eddie i've gone i've gone here while you I'm go rogue <laughs> you go rogue I'll go put well i was really interested you, you you know you give the the thousand meters would that be specific to maybe an event you're training for I mean, we had tom evans on and he was very if he was training say a hunt for 100 mile with ten thousand feet he would, his training would be similar kind of ratios to the event he was doing would that be similar to yourself Absolutely what I would do, yeah, when I'm when I am training for a specific event. But yesterday was just pure fun and pure whatever we pre wanted puppy, to do. Pre puppy <laughs> yeah. lockdown. Yeah, like final day of freedom. But yeah, in terms of training, I would kind of try and work out the you know, roughly how long the race might take me and then kind of work divide the hours and the elevation and get yeah. kind of an elevation per hour. So I'd probably, you know, for CCC, I'd be out trying to get about 500 metres an hour, possibly, or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. Uh, and what kind of dog are you getting? Uh, Hungarian Wiesler. Oh, wow, they're really popular. 
<laughs> yeah, they they, they running, are girl. getting really popular, running, especially yeah, in the running in the running circles. <laughs> yeah, oh, awesome, brilliant. Um, well, I'd love to know before we get to before I go I'm back on script, Eddie. Sorry, <laughs> could you, our listeners and myself included, would love to know a bit about your background as a runner and your journey onto the trails. Uh, yeah, so I kind of started running to get fit for my other sports. So I was playing a lot of football when I used to live in Dubai and that was kind of in probably 2014, 2015, I was playing a lot of football. And then yeah, 2016 started to run a little bit more um, and still playing a lot of football until about 2018. And then, yeah, I think I tried a trail race in there in amongst kind of starting to get into a bit more running yeah. uh, and loved it and you know before that I'd done a lot of other sports so I did a lot of dancing when I was like all through kind of from primary school up and just anything you know that, that at school the PE teachers would just put me into every team that they needed they wouldn't even ask sometimes I remember I ended up doing a hockey tournament and I'd never like played hockey before <laughs> um and I didn't do any structured athletics training but again at school I would love like sports day um I liked like not just the running like I liked high jump um javelin as yeah. well and then but it was more the sprinting at school I like hated the 800 and the 1500 they like felt so hard um and just loved the like 100 200 and doing the relay so yeah that, that came more naturally to me um I mean, I've been chatting with my coach a bit because I'm doing kind of high intensity stuff at the moment and I think I'm I like I feel like fit I feel like getting quite a lot of shape and it's kind of reminded me that I was fast twitch, you know, like when I was young, yeah. I was like, that's what's probably more natural to me is like the sprinting kind of thing. So yeah, that's my kind of background, just loads of different sports, finding the trails kind of 2016-ish. And then, yeah, did a, just started to kind of build up the distance, um, running my first 50K in 2017 on trail. And then, yeah decided after that kind of experience I think I've got something a bit of an ability in this because I liked the the technical stuff I like from all my sport I seem yeah. to find it really easy to run on the technical stuff um and then decided I wanted to actually train properly and race something in 2018 and then that's how it all started cool. was 2018 the first year I'm gonna get one in a trace now girl. uh <laughs> He's been inside for a week. Was that the first year you did CCC? No, that was 2019. So what was what was your first sort of foray into the... I did a, a race called Gross Glockner Ultra Trail. Um, and yeah, it was a 75k. And there was about 4,400 metres of elevation gain. Yeah, it took me like a long time. It took about 11 hours, I think, to do it. But I won. I won the race, and um, I and there were, you know, some competitive runners in the field. I think I was so clueless, you know. It's like I, I think it was a bit of a, a bit of luck, um, obviously a bit of ability, but a lot of like just things coming together. Um, and I had, like went into the lead with about two k to go in that race. Oh, nice. So I know it's like literally on the like you know running back into the town where it finished kind of thing so um yeah just yeah the next year I decided to try 100k for the first time and I did CCC in 2019 yeah um and can we jump forward a little bit to your experience of CCC that you've just done this year mm -hmm. um did you how did you did you ever think you'd find yourself being in the Alps training all summer to then go and do a one of a huge international race and be a contender in that race as well how did the build-up for that race go and how did the race go um so this year's ccc was quite a strange one because i like i just didn't really know if we were we would be going yeah you know, like it, sure. it was 
it was really still so unsure. So it didn't, it, sadly, it wasn't my race. And I and I, I learned a lot from that. Like, I kind of think see, see, if you're doing a race at UTMB, it kind of needs to be your A race. Um, but I did the British Ultra Trail Championship seven weeks before it and that was 100k as well and that was my my a race so I was pretty destroyed after it to be fair and it was really like the build-up was actually really hard um I kind of came back I wasn't really able to train properly you know it was just like keeping things ticking over had a bit of an injury as well that I was managing and that flared up quite bad just before I flew out to France I flew out at the start of August I think it was yeah start of August just to have a bit of time um out there before I thought I would get used to the altitude a bit and um the elevation and you know just be a bit bit more easy to get that kind of elevation that I needed than in Scotland um but but sadly the <sighs> um injury I had was just there lingering so I wasn't able to do quite as much as I wanted but to be honest it's maybe a good thing because I know mm. it can you can yeah. you can go out there and do too much um so it did hold me back <laughs> quite a bit but yeah um I also kind of discovered that e the altitude I was staying at wasn't really enough I found the altitude sections of the course really, really hard. Did you? Um, yeah. Which, which particular parts did you find? Um, like call for it. That, up mm, that climb mm, um, mm. and that kind of, that whole section, to be honest, actually went, they kind of Italy um, into Switzerland section, obviously the, the higher, the higher stuff. Um that was that was pretty tough for me <laughs> it's a huge and, you know, climb as well and it comes like sort of you're not quite halfway but you've worked really hard to get there and then it's a really long climb yeah and you're high yeah yeah so and I don't remember I don't remember feeling like that in 2019 which is hard as well because it's like oh that's um in 2019 <laughs> I had stayed in Font Rameau before so mm -hmm. I'd I'd been a proper out you know I was yeah, sleep, yeah. sleeping at um 1800 meters so yeah lots of lots of learning from it um and yeah like I, I suppose it was it was a funny year as well because you know you didn't know who was going to be there either because of COVID still around and so many people um, in a similar situation of maybe not being able to travel. So, yeah, just kind of, I just focused on everything I could do to get to the start line, to be honest. That was, that was really it. Um, and it was actually, to me, it felt like a huge accomplishment just getting to the start line. Um, like one of the closest to not, starting that I've had I think in a big race it was definitely the most turbulent kind of build up in between the 200k races so very hard to put together amazing Meryl is too uh, modest to say that she won the British trial <laughs> seven weeks before but then to be able to put yourself on an international start line seven weeks later is a huge accomplishment um uh, so you should be really proud of that. One of the things that Thank I loved you. about your race was that you, um, <laughs> you probably, you will have hated it, but that you had a sprint finish at the end. <laughs> There's nothing that annoys me more is that when people like, are like, let's cross the line together. I just can't, I can't, I, I would never personally, personally, I'd never do that. But I loved the fact that you were like, there's no way I'm doing that. There is no way. Can you tell us a little bit about the last, maybe it was the last kilometer. Um, I, I wish it was just the last kilometer. Oh, no. um, so basically in, so La Flager, um, station which is I think seven kilometers to go yeah so when we were up at that aid station so I'd I'd had a bit of a shocker to be honest in the last from Valor's scene I felt okay and then started climbing again going back into altitude hmm. I was I don't know I was I really was surprised but I was like wobbling yeah. all over the place and then my head torch started to flash at me so I had to put my head torch on the lowest setting 
and just to guarantee I could kind of finish because there was still well at least three hours <laughs> maybe two and a half to, to go um so when I got to La Fajera, I had to switch my head torch battery and I had basically a bit of a meltdown because I couldn't get it back in. Um, I've done this loads of times, but you know what it's like when you're just, yeah. you're you're absolutely exhausted and finally got it in. So I'd lost about five minutes there. Um, and that was obviously enough time, but to be honest, because I was going so slow, people were, I was actually getting past. I, I remember saying with my coach before, um, he's like, you're never going to get past at the, in the last section. And it's never happened to me before. So that was another thing to have to deal with was people overtaking mm -hmm. you in the last yeah. section because you know that you're going slow if that's happening, you know, in, in, in an ultra of that length. Um, so, yeah, then there's like a really steep bit um, down from La Flager, and then it's you run down um, the a, quite a wide fire road for a bit and then we go back into the switchback kind of trails and it was just into those switchback trails I stopped to have a wee and then <laughs> oh I oh that was very brave in the last week I, I know but I had stopped. to again I just had to like I had to stop and then literally it was just started going again and a girl passed me oh the worst and so you're like this, let it be a man let it be a man yeah so this is like six I think it must have been about 6k to go. So I ran behind and I was like, you know, descents are kind of my thing. I'm okay at descents. So this is this is me and my strength. It's like I can I can take anyone. <laughs> I can take anyone on a descent. This kind of to to be honest, was going through my head. And I was like, Phew, no, but this girl obviously is good too at descents. So yeah. we honestly we raced from six for six K. Um and I just stayed behind her and it was quite hard work just to stay behind us. So I just knuckled down and, and it went through my head, though it did. I was like, oh, I could just I could just let this go. Yeah. And then I was like, I, I luckily was managed to kind of, yeah, realize I would be very annoyed tomorrow if I did. Yeah. But in that moment, it's very like you're so tired and um it's been a long day <laughs> but yeah I just said no you gotta you gotta finish this race knowing you've given absolutely everything <laughs> and then yeah just we we stuck together there was there's like a bit after um Shelley La Floria you've got descent but then it like flattens off a little bit and when it flat went flat it's only for maybe half a k she kind of dropped back. So for whatever reason, flat was hard for her. Yeah. Descending was fine. So I was kind of like, okay, don't this go, the town's go. the town's flat. <laughs> so maybe I can uh do something in the in the town. And then yeah, it felt like I honestly thought I was running like four minute Ks <laughs> <laughs> in the for the final like 2k I felt like I was going so fast and it, it to be honest it probably was quite fast for CCC but um it felt so much faster and it was like it was probably like five minute k's I think maybe the last kilometer was a sub five minute k which I was pretty impressed with yeah really <laughs> considering what state you were up at the aid station too yeah shows what yeah. bit of competitiveness just was. <laughs> How, what was the time difference in the end? Between I, think, I think 10 seconds. <gasps> wow. Do you think you'd ever have that conversation with somebody at latter stages in the race to cross the line together? I saw a few people holding hands this weekend on race photographs. Um, yeah, that's not something I'd ever do. I can't ever imagine having a finish. Maybe in. like a really long multi-day. No. No. <laughs> 100 percent Imagine, like, imagine you you I don't know, maybe maybe if like, you know They'd saved you, your life you were, or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like even if you were you were close for the whole like you know, you imagine you ran a hundred K race and there was someone you were like to like with. Yeah. It doesn't really happen though. Like but you literally ran the whole thing like this. 
I don't train to go and cross the line. This morning, really. <laughs> it's not, it's not my bag. But even though, like, I love that story. I love that story. I wanted to get that story because um, there are some there are the bits of racing that, especially when we do ultras, that there we love that because we don't get to do that. But I mean, I'm sure you didn't love it at the time. But looking back on it now, how awesome was that? That that all that training that you'd done, perhaps all your years as like a competitive footballer and stuff, it yeah. all came out. And it all yeah. held together for just that ten seconds. <laughs> Story. Yeah, no, it was it was really hard, but yeah, I was I was happy happy the next day, you know, mm. with the, with the decision, um, and I think yeah, it's a competitive race, isn't it? You know, like you every place you can, in those big compete. races they count. Yeah, yeah, you compete to the the very end. So yeah, you're back in Scotland now, but you were Dubai and Spain. As a, as a PE teacher, I'm curious, were you actively running in Dubai? What was that like training in Dubai? I know you've mentioned you played football out there, but was that like five o'clock in the morning to beat the heat? Like, I, I do think I probably wouldn't be the runner I am now if I hadn't done my Dubai training because it makes you really tough. Like, the training out there in the summers were so, so hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember before the race in Gross Glockner uh, in 2018, I did a five hour run in July. It was like the last school had just finished and it was like literally the, that weekend. And I was then flying out, thankfully, but I had to do a five hour run. And it I started at, I think, 3.30 in the morning to be able to try and avoid the heat because by nine o'clock it's absolute scorching. Yeah. And it was sometimes the can the heat just wouldn't even drop at night and it was actually 39 degrees oh my goodness when i started and it was 40 degrees when i finished so uh -huh. it was so so tough um but yeah you just i suppose that i learned there to run to feel like you really have to no, um, you do, you know you, pace goes out the window even though it's very flat there's no point even trying to hit a pace a certain pace in the summer it's just about yeah how do you feel and um, do you feel like you can sustain this and also to be honest even if you felt if you feel quite good starting a run in that that heat yeah. I always would like hold back a bit more because it just your core temperature is just creeping up creeping up yeah. um and also like I had to learn how to fuel like a lot because again with the heat it's always about trying to um, get loads of fuel in. Um, so yeah, it was just it was a good a good place to start my training. Um, and there's some stunning parts about an hour and fifteen minutes from Dubai. That's where I would tend to go every weekend to train, and that would that would mean about three thirty in the morning. You'd have to leave the city and get out there. So it was a huge commitment. I knew I knew I liked it a lot because I was committed to doing this every weekend, um, even sometimes two days on the weekend. And how's the transition now? You're heading into winter in Scotland from mm. Dubai and Spain. <clears throat> yeah, what's, how are you finding that, the dark, cold mornings now? Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's not too bad. I, like, I feel quite, um, quite lucky. I teach PE on two days of the week now and I do my own business on the other days so I only really need to run in the dark two days of the week I can you know make my training work and so I'm quite lucky like that um if I was teaching five days a week I think I would be running in the dark every night yeah. so yeah no I, I fairly adjusted I, I I really enjoyed last winter and autumn I hadn't seen autumn you know the changes yeah. for for years so it was you know I had a lot to just distract myself with but the fact that I was covered in mud and had all of <laughs> wet feet and uh, I just could like look around and be like oh that's so nice all the colors of the leaves and yeah 
you take it for granted sometimes actually the change the seasons mm. uh, when you go somewhere that it, it literally just doesn't change to australia or something like that yeah um, you know, i do like the seasons so what does your training look like um now that you're sort of back in a sort of normal everyday environment have you have you got a coach does somebody write your training plan for you and what does a sort of typical week look like at the moment yeah so i work with paul tierney I'm not sure if you guys we know, know him, paul. but we know yeah paul. so i've been working with paul for just over a year now um and training at the moment uh i think we're just kind of starting to shift into a bit more of a kind of lactate threshold block but i've been doing um kind of a couple of sessions a week interval sessions actually quite short hard hill reps for a while now maybe for about six weeks and uh and a long run on the weekend um i i do like hill sprints as well in some of my easy runs before i do my sessions i find that really helps i think again with my fast switch fibers it does help me to keep recruiting them and um yeah that's kind of how it is so every Generally, every day I have a, an easy run, an hour to an hour and 20, um, or I'm doing the two sessions or a long run. What's yeah. your favourite session on your plan when you were uh, going um, I quite like, I like anything, anything like fartlek kind of sessions or like... I used to read, I used to do a lot of like five times five minute hill reps. I used to quite like them. I used to just like to see, yeah, I used to just set myself little like targets. I feel like with the, with the intervals, you can kind of set a, an intention for the session. Like, oh, I want to get comfortable being uncomfortable or, you know, something. And I'd play around a bit with them. Um, with things in my in those kind of sessions and my easy runs I like at the moment I'm playing around a little bit with my technique after having some biomechanical canal some when I was in Spain a few weeks ago so that's again plenty to think about (laughs) when I'm running what's your least what's your least favorite thing what's your least favorite (laughs) session because I've got one that I always go oh no and then Um, I put it back Every day, I'm like, I wouldn't do that today. Strength and conditioning. Oh, that was my next question. Was whether you do it. <laughs> I would say that's my least favorite. Um, but no, in terms of running, running sessions, I'd love. Um, yeah, kind of like them all. What's the one that you don't like, Edwina? I have to do this these hill plyometrics every week it's Mm -hmm. really good session but it hurts so bad (laughs) (laughs) but it's so good and i've got it it conditions you so well that you don't really get it's not like a cardiovascular session it's just like the ache the ache is real and Mm -hmm. and you go into it tired because i'm well i just finished my training block now but and then you get to the top and it i normally do between like 1500 and 2000 feet of climbing in the session and then it's like oh, and now I've got a jog all the way down. And it seems to take like an hour to get down this hill on like broken legs. Anyway, <laughs> that is good I wish do. I could find a... Um, yeah, sorry, strength Gary. Condition, the strength and condition is the same. For, for, for myself, it's... I appreciate why I do it, but I was just racking my brain just, just last week. What could I do that was physically practical? So maybe I could do a job, do a good deed and actually um, do some strength work as well, instead of just sitting on my, in the front room, doing press-ups and sit-ups and stuff like that. I really, what could I do? Be like a, I don't know, if I lived in the lakes or something, be a volunteer and do dry storm walling or something just like that way. But yeah, still. still trying if I carry the dog food, I'm like, that's it. That's done for the day. <laughs> yeah. What well, my least favorite running it? one's probably oh, yeah. three, I always have to do this three times 15 minutes and it's quite a little short turnaround and it's not hilly it's flat um yeah i don't enjoy that one oh, i need company for that one yeah you need company Just are you looking look, lucky Meryl? do you have a, a training group where you're based um yeah there's like there's quite a good you know there's a lot of very good runners actually in in this area i've just been added to a whatsapp group um with some speedy females so that should be quite fun uh, for over the winter and there's 
and literally in the in this village which is that i've just moved to which is great um my boyfriend runs ultras as well so we well not that we we're going to be able to run much together with the puppy arriving but we <laughs> we, we do tend to run uh together when we can um and yeah just oh there's there's always people that you can go run with join for long runs so there's a lot of people running ultras up in Aberdeenshire there's a lot of really good um runners actually so plenty company if we could go back um a bit to the postponed world trail champs I know it's not great news to talk about Mm -hmm. but what's the situation now with it um you know do you have to re-qualify or what does next year look like yeah so that was yeah rubbish news I think was it um Two weeks ago now, yeah, we heard, um, but it's been postponed to this time next year. So yeah, we we got a email to say that selections will be void. Um, and oh, that's so rubbish, isn't it? That's yeah, so rubbish. It is, and I've not really spoken to anyone uh, about it since. Really, it's just been a busy week. I moved, I moved house and decided to get a puppy, so it's like being a bit. <laughs> I think I've been, ne- I've been nesting yeah. like the, the <laughs> kind of as you do um so yeah yeah no it's actually yeah fill the void and I and I like really glad I don't have the world chance because I probably won't get any sleep for the next couple of months yes. um but no I wouldn't I, I probably wouldn't have got the puppy if the world yeah. chance were on yeah. um oh, so it linings. is yeah exactly so um and yeah, it, it's it's tough. I I don't actually know that, that I don't know what next year is going to look like because I need to now wait to hear what the selection policy is and yeah. the trial situation. Because, like I said earlier, it took a lot out of me to do the trial. Yeah, I couldn't then do another big ultra that, like to the best of my ability. I know I obviously was delighted with six, but it wasn't where I wanted to be yeah. time wise and so I I do believe I can do a better performance there. Um and yeah, the next big race was going to be the world was the world champs in February. So um yeah, just you know, just trying to decide what what races to do. I'm quite tempted to go a little bit shorter. Um because then I can st- I can do a few more races you know that uh, you know that's what I find a bit hard last year was trying to do long ones and then you're very limited in the number you can do so I'd quite like to do some shorter ones and I did download a couple of 50ks um and really really enjoyed them in last October and this this May so uh yeah just and what would be your preferred distance you know you want to go a bit shorter now these uh, 50ks Mm. but yeah ideally what would you like to race um i think maybe around kind of the 50 mile um distance i think that kind of you know maybe i'm not quick enough for the 50ks at the moment but uh i'm not you know, I'm not, um, yeah and then uh but a bit, a bit more training maybe you could get there um but then the 50 mile would probably allow me to use yeah like my endurance and strength side of things yeah. that I've you know developed over the last few years. So yeah, I'm not I've still like got a very, very draft race schedule for next year. I'm not even I've not signed up for anything. <laughs> I've not like booked anything because it's it's so unknown at the moment with the with this the situation now. So waiting to hear a bit more and then I'll I'll uh, get get on some sign ups. As a you know, as a recreational athlete, it's you don't really know what's around the corner. But somebody who's invested in it much uh, more, even from a financial point of view, I can't imagine um, how precarious it, it must feel at times. Outside of running, you touched on it. Then you were a, a PE teacher a couple of days a week, but you also run your own business. Can you tell us a little bit about um, about that? About your Gary and I, we were trawling through your website, going, "We don't read that blog, one. yeah." yeah. What's that? What's that? Tell us a little bit about your lifestyle coaching and uh, and your blogs. And Gary, particularly, he wants me to ask you why he's craving sweet foods. <laughs> Always craving sweet foods. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, 
basically through through education I have trained for a number of years in coaching that's the kind of um leadership style that I leadership training that I went through um in when I was teaching full-time so I've always been very passionate about coaching and that kind of style where you don't tell people what to do um, you kind of help people to almost work out what they need to do themselves um, and get people to discover like their own resources that they can use their strengths that they can use to change their own behavior their lifestyle for the better so um, you know it's and basically unlock their potential so I, I basically kind of now I'm combining my two kind of passions I love that side of it in teaching um, and I'd use it working with children and colleagues as well um, but now I can use it in a health capacity so I do health coaching health and lifestyle coaching and you know help people just to bring about shifts in their behaviors and their habits so that they can achieve their health goals if that's kind of weight loss or if it is to run their first marathon. Um, but yeah, generally I'm I'm just helping people to 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 get healthier and to have, you know, live each day with more energy. Um, and Gary linked to your thing, what it probably is, is that you need to rest more. That's the the <laughs> <laughs> No, it is it is um very common that we crave sweet things when we are tired like that's when we're you know when we're run down and when we're um kind of maybe burning the candle at both ends there is a pattern there that we 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 go for the comfort we go for that kind of um energy quick energy fix but it in the long term doesn't doesn't help us but um so it's looking at how to how to slow down a bit and that's something I massively did with my life I was literally living life at 100 miles per hour when I lived in Dubai um I was working 12 hour days I was training two hours a day probably as well getting up at four in the morning to be able to train yeah. um you know and when you're doing when you're living like that can you cook? No, you don't have nope. time to cook. <laughs> but when you're a runner, you need to eat well. Like you need to eat well and you need to rest. Um, that's how we adapt. And uh, so I really enjoy uh, working with runners. To be honest, I would say 98% of my clients are runners. You know, that's the way it's even, even though in my website it's, I'm not saying, you know, I only work with runners for the health and lifestyle coaching, but that's the, the people that are drawn to me and I'm drawn to you as well to work with. So, yeah, it's, it's really cool. More rest, Eddie. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really hard. You know, something, you made a great point. I listened to another podcast um, with Mario, Mario Frioli and his guest was talking mm. about actually uh, simplifying things and removing things. Well, as an athlete, you tend to want to do more to get better. Um, and actually, maybe I should do a bit less. <laughs> so, um, it's interesting. But another blog, which I thought was really interesting, um, and our listeners probably could all benefit from, is uh, tips for good sleep. Any, mm. yeah, we will direct them to the website, so you don't want to give all, all your blog content away. But yeah, <laughs> any tips for good sleep? Um, and I am shocking. Our hands up, literally. The last thing I do is probably check my phone, which I know is a massive uh, no no before bedtime. But luckily, I sleep okay. But yeah, some tips for our listeners. Yeah, um, well, sleep wise, caffeine is something to, to really look at. Um, and also just well yeah because I think a lot of a lot of people believe that you know oh caffeine doesn't affect me you know I I, I can have a cap I can have a cup of tea at nine o'clock and still be able to sleep um but everyone is different and that's something that is very as you know as running coaches as health coaches we all know that every person is completely unique so everyone will have different levels of caffeine sensitivity but some of us are very sensitive to it yeah. so um 
that rule of, you know, no caffeine after two o'clock. Some people, it needs to be no caffeine after 9 a.m., you know, yeah. like to have, any, to have any chance of getting a good night's sleep. Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, definitely looking at caffeine, but also like just looking at your kind of stress levels, I suppose, because if, you know, if we are, are in a, if we're stressed, we obviously back to, um, you know, our, our roots, we, we don't sleep. We're ready to run, aren't we? We're ready to, yeah. to run away uh, for safety. So if you are just, if you're on a daily basis, just slightly on edge, um, and it could be ever so slightly, we are, you know, in the, sympathetic nervous system fight or flight rather than the parasympathetic nervous system then that's not going to help you sleep either so looking to be more in the present moment really and being able to do breathing exercises to help bring yourself back into that kind of rest repair um mode that that would definitely help and that can just take literally like right now we could just like take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out, relax everything. Yeah. And and then go again into our day. But if we don't consciously check into that present moment, we're just on automatic pilot all day, we could get to bedtime and we're literally like so tight and stressed yeah. out and very low levels. Not that you're running around all day, you know, in a, in a kind of panic state. It could be just going going along a little bit in the background so yeah. yeah i think that's that's something breathing exercises i think really really important being in the present moment and not in automatic pilots mode all day and being mindful of your stress levels it's super tricky because sometimes the boundaries between work and home are so blurred especially now with mm-hmm, people, so many mm-hmm. people working from home it um and with social media i do find it quite a nightmare sometimes to physically switch off but having that a definite pause the breathing exercise i think that could be a big aid yeah. i'm really curious and I know nothing about this, so it'd be great for me to hear something too. Um, NLP, what, yeah, a bit more about that. Yeah, so um, I've trained in NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, so I'm an NLP coach as well as uh, tra- doing my training as an integrative nutrition coach. Um, NLP basically is about, so the N stands for your neuro side of things, so all your brain. Um, L is the linguistics, so your language, both your um, verbal and your non-verbal language. And then your programming is, uh, sorry, the NLP, the P part, the programming is to do with your behaviours, your emotions. um, And basically in terms of like the neuro side of things, obviously like how we think, and as an NLP coach, so you're basically able to to look at people when you're working with them and and pick up things in the, subconsciously in their language, in their behaviors, their emotions, their body language, verbally and non-verbally, and help people to make shifts in the behavior because we basically we we are in patterns we have patterns and we're programmed from how all our experiences and everything and in order to actually change the way that we habitually behave we need to break some patterns um so as an nlp coach it's about getting a little bit deeper into those those areas um when working with somebody one-to-one to help you know discover really what's important what's holding people back from making changes and it's often at a subconscious level that you know just talking having a light conversation wouldn't you wouldn't discover it you've got to go a little bit deeper and yeah. over time um get to the bottom of what <laughs> what it really is um so yeah it's just that's that's nlp coaching it's really powerful it's it's originated you know from studying successful people yeah so it's really linked 
um, with success. So it's again, again linked to you know how you unlock your potential, your own resources within you, your own strength, and moving forward. It's not about like therapy counseling you know which obviously looks at the past in NLP you maybe would look at the past but it's more um to help you you know looking at a past time when you were successful yeah. um in a certain area and and what what happened there what was different there to now um and applying applying that moving forward That's super interesting it could be super powerful if if somebody has this um uh, like a revelation when they can kind of refer back to a time when they were successful, however they kind of determined success, I suppose. Um, yes. Yeah, it's quite amazing. And yeah, you mm-hmm. you mentioned about then you you possibly would look at um, the, the other successful people to determine what is potential success for somebody who's coming to you for some advice on this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You also have this uh, Eat Well, Run Well program. Um, I believe... You can find out more information on your website, which is, <laughs> you tell me I that. I think it's just Meryl, MerylKeeperCoaching.com. Yeah. 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 If you could share a bit about this, uh, the, the, the program, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. So Eat Well, Run Well is a group coaching program. So it's um, with me hosting it. And then there's normally about three people in the group. And like-minded people, again, runners who are, you know, they know that, they, they could take along in their running absolutely fine, but they know they need to take it kind of something to the next level. And it's generally to do with their food. So I help people to eat better. Um, yeah. So we literally do look at what should be on our plate, um, but also things like the timing of food. Um, but to be honest, most importantly, it's about the it, the lifestyle stuff and that actually fitting into life <laughs> you know how can we get better at our food well it takes time it takes not yeah. doesn't take lots of time but maybe just in the initial stages to get used to making some new recipes and so on so it's the accountability um uh, you get from that group and um, we're sharing obviously like recipes and things like that as well but accountability to actually take the action steps it's all about taking action each week, one or two achievable action steps that are going to help you to eat better so you can run better. So it might be, you know, I'm going to batch cook um, some brown rice on a Sunday. So I know I have got a good portion of carbohydrates with each meal for Monday, Tuesday, and then I'm going to batch cook again on Wednesday some quinoa. Um, You know, that could literally be your action step for the week. Or sometimes it's like, okay, I'm going to focus on increasing leafy green vegetables. And that is all you need to go away and do. But that then becomes a a habit and it becomes easier and, and you've got the accountability and the support of the group. And we also have a WhatsApp group. So we kind of chat and share photos of what we're making and keep each other motivated through that so yeah it's really really good and and I also there's the option if you also want to be coached your running program alongside um the group health coaching so I coach most of the people in the group some people come along just for the eat well part yeah um, and they do their own running or they've got another running coach already so yeah i love that simple simple actions you can do sometimes you see these things and you just think i can't do that it's too much <laughs> too much to do but yeah. you, you mentioned habit a few times is there is a, <clears throat> i was curious is there a period of time where if you do something for i don't know four weeks then that positive or negative becomes a habit there's that saying isn't there like 21 days but i i don't know i don't necessarily uh, like swear by that rule um, i ask my kids every morning to make the bed for the last <laughs> like 10 years and it's definitely does that i uh, that rule is not a habit <laughs> yeah cool. so it is uh, for the people that i work with that make things stick they take small steps like whatever they're doing they go about it in a really uh, yeah, 
they take small steps and then it mm. all adds up mm. yeah and it's yeah. never overwhelming um yeah, yeah. so yeah that's that's the kind of approach and that seems to definitely work what an amazing person you are you all your all your jobs and everything is about getting everybody else to live uh but it sounds like it's come from a personal place that maybe you've experienced this sort of like yeah. tiredness and burnt out and so you can have real empathy with people and really understand where they're um where they're coming from but um i'm sure people are very lucky to work with you so so patient and i love the scottish accent i was listening going oh, she could you could record those like those when you can't sleep apps you know and you just read a lovely story um so you just, sleep edwina is that what you're saying oh, <laughs> I, just, it was, I was like oh it's such a beautiful accent it's like so <laughs> melting um uh uh, can we just pop back into running before we, we we let you go and go um talk a little bit i you lifted up a little bit to your shoulders to see that um you had an innovate t-shirt on um yeah. can you tell us a little bit about are they sponsoring you now um uh and and a little bit about maybe your favorite bit of running kit that you wear um, because the sort of running that you do is it's rugged, it's aggressive. You need good kit, good trainers, and people are always looking for that. Like, oh, what is the best pair of trainers, or what is the best backpack? Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about, um, yeah, maybe your work with them, and what is your favorite bit of Innovate kit? Yeah, and um, yeah, so I started working with Innovate just um, earlier this year, maybe around May or June, I think it was. Um, and yeah, I'm really just so grateful for all the kit that they do send me I'm, I'm absolutely stocked up for the winter for whatever conditions might arrive in Scotland um, <laughs> which is every condition yeah. yeah and I think that's what I don't know I just um like I love racing like a thing I even love, love the shorter stuff so you know I love the variety of shoes that they have like I just think there literally are shoes for every kind of trail race that you might want to do um whether that's you need cushioning for the longer stuff or if you need proper lugs for you know something really muddy and um so yeah but i would say the fav my favorite piece of kit is my pack um so it's like the race ultra vest two and it's like or actually maybe it's three in one but basically um it was an absolute lifesaver at CCC when they announced the cold weather kit because I wouldn't if I didn't have this extra bit to put on the back I wouldn't yeah. have had enough space for my stuff um and it so it basically has got an extra bag that you can put on the back which would be amazing f again like for fast packing so um and when I was in Spain just recently I was up at in Sierra Nevada and I think we were up at like 3,000 meters and we started when it was dark so it was, it was freezing nearly it was like about three degrees so we needed all the layers and then you know an hour later it's boiling <laughs> so we need to take all the layers off but it's I, the pack had that capacity whilst you know Pablo who I was with he had like clothes everywhere you know because he, he couldn't carry it so it was just amazing um and that's CCC it was great to just have you know have you know, your down jacket and your protective eyewear, <laughs> all your extra layers that you had to have in the pack, not totally squished, you know, and if you need something out of it. Yeah, you can get it out. You don't have to take everything out like you would in a total squishing pack. So I love my pack. What was um, your um what was your trainer of choice for CCC? I wore the Terra Ultra. Um, you. you got that one, Gary? I've had about three of those. <laughs> Very good shoe. Yeah. Actually, yeah. so it could be, is it the Terra Ultra? Is that the, there's the, oh my goodness, the Trail Fly is the big kind of maximal. The Terra Ultra is the a bit more stripped back. Yeah, Terra Ultra, it's a great shoe. But it feels fast. It doesn't feel, I feel the Trail Fly feels a bit heavier because it yeah. is a heavier shoe. Um, so they're like 270 grams, the Terra Ultra. Yeah. Rather than 300. So it's got a yeah. bit of a rocker. It's got four mil lugs um, and super light, really. Mm. And um, yeah, I can't really fault it as a fast trail shoe. And I, I spent, I didn't take it off once on the Bob Graham round, 21, 22 hours. So yeah, 
they've not Amazing. they they pretty much wrecked it though in one in one in one day they were they not they weren't very good afterwards. <laughs> that, that's how Bob Graham rides does, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they got <laughs> smashed up after that. <laughs> Can I ask one more question, Gary, before you do your have you yeah, got a bucket list race, Mel, that you'd like to do in the next few years? There are a lot that I would there are a lot of UK races that I want to do because I like I actually have done a lot of international races because I was living in Dubai. So I have I have loads. Um I really want to do like Skyline Scotland sometime, Glencoe Skyline. Um, you know, that's one that stands out straight away when you when you ask that question. Um and also like Ultra Trail Snowdonia. I'd love to do that. Like I'd love to do and now that I've kind of toughened up a little bit with the British weather, <laughs> I feel like I could maybe do some of these races. But before I was like, no, just race race places that are warm and guaranteed to be dry. On yeah. The race yeah. Day. Well, now you've got all this kit, you might as well. Yeah. You've got to use it. <laughs> exactly. So, you got to get some gnarly photos for the sponsors. <laughs> in desert. Well, there's lots of options there, isn't it? So that's good that you and you'd be able to get into those races if once um well British Athletics will probably give you two weeks' notice of the selection race. So you may be able to get and hopefully get round to lots of local uh local races as well, tick off some of those boxes. Yeah. 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 No, I feel I feel like I wanna race a little bit closer to home um next year. And yeah, just again, hopefully the competitive um you know, there's hopefully there's competitive races within them, which I'm sure there will be. Uh, there's definitely a lot of, uh, especially in the shorter races, I think there's uh, some, you know, a lot of very competitive races happening on a local level. So, um, yeah. And I, I have to say, I did, I, I did see the Lakeland 50 and Lakeland 100 video uh, this year for the first time and I was a bit like oh it's a good, good race so that that one's also uh, you know there, there seem to be even bigger crowds there than UTMB uh, <laughs> well maybe around the chip shop in Ambleside <laughs> yeah, the bridge in Ambleside. Ambles, Ambleside is so busy yes. like, if, you, if you ever do it and you run through you know you've, you've had this experience anyway overseas but if when you run through Ambleside celebrity status you feel like a celebrity status it's amazing that'd be amazing because you don't get you don't get it very often in ultra running so no it's, it. it's only you two minutes of the race so you've got to milk it <laughs> and you have a different color number on your bag so you get the oh that's the 100 mile <laughs> doing 100 mile or whatever it's like this bit of extra kudos it's pretty good it's a good place <laughs> should yeah. do the fast questions yeah Right, so yeah, we have five quick questions to end the show with. What are we going to go for? You're at a checkpoint. You're feeling pretty smashed, and there's no quinoa or kale available. What would your <laughs> <laughs> What would your guilty We've had a guilty pleasure be to get you out of the checkpoint again. We've pot noodles seems very popular. That's the level that we're at. <laughs> um, I'd probably be like. A massive handful of like jelly babies or pure sugar, like some Haribo, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, stay with food, peanut butter, or honey. <gasps> oh, that's that's really tough. <laughs> We're not, you know, like, that's what I, I actually had. I had toast like after my run today, and I had one was peanut butter, and one was because I got this lovely. Um, local butter, butter with honey, like literally ooh, two, and it was ooh. so good. I, like I couldn't have two peanut butter; I had to have one with the honey and one with peanut butter. And then I went back and had seconds again of again had to exact. <laughs> <laughs> so they're completely we tied. Make, we won't make you choose, yeah. Ippy, yeah. Ippy. <laughs> a, a movie you remember watching? It doesn't have to be your favorite movie, but just something you think. Well, oh, I've seen that quite a few times. A movie that you remember watching more than once. <laughs> Um, like love actually, oh, <laughs> that's coming to mind. For sure. 
Either that That's or funny. Elf. They're probably the two that I've watched oh, the most. Yes. Elf will Elf. be back on the roster soon. Oh, I love yeah. Elf. I make the kids watch it and I cry <laughs> laughing, even though I've watched it so many times. Yeah. You know, but last night, I watched Bridesmaids last night. That oh, is that's another good one. I was when, crying. They're, when they're on the aeroplane. It's the wedding dress in the street. That's the bit that gets me. <laughs> <laughs> super, <laughs> Eddie's gone. <laughs> super, superhero power. <laughs> superhero power. Oh, I'd, I'd to fly. Yeah, I'd like to fly. As I love descending, so they will just fly up to the top of the hills and then run down. <laughs> you might need your smartphone for this one, but you might remember it all. Actually, um, last song that you listened to on iTunes or Spotify or any other streaming service. Yeah. I don't listen to much music. I know that as well. It's quite my, my, I know I don't listen to much music at all. Um, but if I was to like, uh, I don't even know. What's yours, Eddie? It's going to be dreadful, isn't it? Sorry. No, it is it's dreadful. It's so <laughs> dreadful. I thought what that. I didn't realise I engaged my lips. Sorry. What, what, uh, what I've been listening to recently is the new Westlife song. Oh, for God. <laughs> Westlife having a new song? Oh, you do. It's really good. It's really upbeat. Da -da. Oh. The key changes it is incredible. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I, li I love I love a cheesy tune all the time. Um, the actually <laughs> just remembered the one of my runners had commented the other day um, about I think it was like he'd got through his intervals by listening to the Lion King um, soundtrack. So that is the last <laughs> thing I'd like put into YouTube. Was <laughs> he lives in he lives in you from the from the Lion King like the musical? Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, I didn't expect I didn't expect either of those answers. <laughs> Classic. Well, that's it. Uh, that's the top five. Thanks a lot, Meryl. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Meryl, for coming on the show. Best of luck with where, wherever your innovate trail fly trainers take you <laughs> next thank year. You. We look forward to um, hopefully having you on the show again when you've done smash some more races. Yeah. Um, and yeah, well, however the year unfolds, good luck with the business and. Oh, sorry. Good luck with the puppy. And I cannot <laughs> wait for the Instagram spam. Yeah. <laughs> I totally puppy. know now why people like have their own puppy, like they have their dog accounts. Cause I know that mine's just going to be no longer about running. It's going to just be about Winston. So. Oh, Winston. Oh, Winston. He sounds cute already. Sounds like he might have a big bottom. <laughs> He's got a massive paws. Anyway, he's like, he's really big. Vizslas are big. My friend's got two Vizsla puppies. Oh. And they are, they're just, their paws are like, hello. I'm just <laughs> big paws. Very popular running dog, isn't it? Oh, they're the best. Yeah. Apart from mine. Winston can be second. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks thank a lot. You, you take thank care. Thank you so much, Meryl. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much Meryl for coming on the show good luck with everything next year we look forward to uh, talking to you again soon and recently Meryl um, has welcomed Winston the Vizsla puppy have you seen if you don't follow Meryl on the Instagram go and have a follow for puppy spam there's never enough puppy spam in yeah, the, the world most popular dog on Instagram surely they're very popular at the moment aren't they but or yeah. whether all the people we follow are runners yeah. And therefore, Vizslas, Vizslas are... But they're just as good as German shorthead pointers, aren't they? Lindy's looking at me going... <laughs> <laughs> Upcoming races, what we got? God, it's funny to think about races. I feel so out of shape and so out of touch with... Uh, Doesn't take long, does it? I've had a week of fat and sugar and I feel great. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, I've the thought of putting a race, I'm not sure I'd get to the post stop box. <laughs> no, no. But this week, uh, over in the lakes, is two to hell, Helen. I've done that one oh, at least once and it starts to ask them. It's kind of a, an out and back with a big loop, like a big frying pan shape and you run around the base of Helvellyn. I suppose that's the best way to describe it. 38 miles, 2,000 metres. And I know in previous years, the weather's been so bad they've had to kind of modify the route on yeah, the Yeah, I was going to say, is it not a bit 
to what's the yeah snow definitely like? uh one year they did an out and back to sticks pass or maybe just before sticks pass because the wind i think then the wind chill factor was brutal but when i did it, it was a little fortunate we did the full proper course and uh, i finished that race exactly seven hours it was like the numbers were so tidy i was pretty <laughs> pleased with that whether that's a fast time or not i don't I, I wasn't really aware of that but it was just really tidy numbers but yeah great race good luck and we got a new event, new event for 2020, 2022. I'm going to struggle to say that all for the next few weeks, 2022. Yeah. Uh, an ultra event, the Kongs Lake Ultra. Two routes, starting and finishing in Keswick. Oh, it's just right up your street, this. Yeah. Traversing glorious rocky summits, sublime ridges, and exceptional mountain scenery with 24 hours to complete each course. The long course is 80K with 5,300 meters. Yeah. And the short course is 59K with 3,500 meters. Uh, for more information, visit the uh, visit their new website or type into Google Kongs Lake Ultra. Yeah. What a great, and I mean, if you are training for um, a European mountain race, yeah. those are, that's a great load. 80K and 5,000 meters, that is. That's, that's almost, that's, that's more climbing in that than that than CCC. The CCC yeah. is six thousand over a hundred over hundred and bit k. Yeah, sixty k and three thousand five hundred meters. That is again huge. So if you be, if perhaps you are looking at doing UTMB in one of those big events, that would be a great race to go and uh, see how you feel over that sort of distance and climbing. Yeah. I'm going to check out the course uh, map, actually, see where they go. It's curious. And they're super busy, actually, the Kong guys. They put on all the Winterfell stuff, and then now they're dipping the toe into this side of uh, the racing series. So, yeah, really, really good. And it's, you know, if you want a bit of retail therapy in Keswick, it's quite a nice shop to go into. A <laughs> bit of a break from the cafe or yes. on the way to the cafe. Right, what what's what are you going to, what you got coming up, Gary? What have I got coming this? Well, <clears throat> still no real training, but I'm casting an eye on my kind of 5 10k plan yes and um I, i'll probably gravitate towards the jack daniels running formula basic the way i kind of map it out which looking at it initially is lots of 200s and 400s which is uh good recovery they're, they're basic so you run 200 and have a good 200 uh recovery and same with the 400s and the accumulation of effort is quite a lot uh but it's a lot shorter and faster than what i've been doing for probably well, two years with Bob Graham around and stuff like that. So it's going to be... <laughs> Build into that very gently. Recruit those hamstrings. Yeah, very. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't start with 2200s. You won't be able to walk for like no, the next no, no. two weeks. Yeah, it is a, it is a build-up. But I because of the speed, um, it's, I think it's repetition pace, whatever that is, according to Jack Daniels uh, tables. So yeah, that's that's quite... Would you do those on a track or are you just going to do them on a... Don't have a... Yeah, this is interesting, actually. We can maybe talk about this next week. We're going to have a bit more of a coaching uh, conversation. But yeah, normally I'd find a real super flat road or as best as possible and just go backwards and forwards. But I wondered, well, because it's that's a bit dull, do I just kind of incorporate into a, into a run that I'm doing and some of the 200s will be slower that, or, and some would be maybe faster. Um, but I didn't know if then that would take away from what that workout was supposed to be. So... I'm unsure how I'm going to approach that yet, but yeah, we can chat about that next week. And what else? My goodness me, my little metal hanger uh, business is it's really busy, which is great. I can't complain. My goodness me. But um, yeah, super busy with that over at metalhangers.co.uk. Um, lots of gifts being ordered for. Yeah, I don't want to spoil any oh, yeah. first any uh, bubbles. Yeah, some people have said don't post this on social media <laughs> because it's a gift for some. <laughs> yeah, don't put the picture. Busy making Christmas gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've generated actually. I've generated a run to the hills code, which gives you ten percent off. So oh. if you head over to there, it's all in uppercase. I'm not too sure. I've never tried the cord, but yeah, 10% off, run to the hills. And if it doesn't work, just give me a shout. I'll, uh, I'll sort you out. Oh, what, what a guy. What about yourself? <laughs> Probably still recovering from my hangover a little bit. My last week this week before the kids break up and it becomes epic. So I'm fucking quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and have a couple of ski days because normal skiing, um, as the lifts are open and before the crowds come, because over Christmas we don't ski. The kids ski. I mean, this is hardcore. My kids' age range is from 11 down to six. Yeah. And they ski every day apart from Christmas Day um, for three hours the but the oldest one four hours no three hours three hours every day uh for two weeks that's awesome 
this is awesome, but it, it's basically me and Bryn are taxi drivers. Yeah. And we don't see each other much because it takes ages to get to the lifts because of all the queues and everything. Though we're really lucky in that the kids can, um, because they're in these clubs, we can just drop them. And then they they get like privileged. They're so funny. They get like privileged. They're allowed to just ski where there's massive ski lifts. They can just yeah straight in and then they have a special line they're allowed to just push in front oh, yeah. and then they just get on the next chairlift and off VIPs. they go which i mean is uh, but they're kind of up there to train and so then if they're queuing the whole time they'll do so if yeah. they have to queue if they come skiing with us they get like the rage because they're like <laughs> oh my god this is so dull because we have to skim like well you you little privileged yeah, you do yeah. not yeah all these people have paid hundreds of euros and you're just these little kids that come <laughs> in they probably and they ski like absolute so they put the heebie-jeebies of anybody because they're going at like 200 kilometers an hour in and out of everybody um so yeah they but they love it it's not you know and i love them doing it so it's not a chore but so this week i'm going to go and do some proper skiing on lifts to get my ski legs back a bit and enjoy the quiet peace and i might stop for coffee um yeah because then over christmas brin and we've in previous years we've tried to like ski as well but this is so busy we end up like doing two runs and then because it's amazing the minute that um new year's eve happens everyone disappears and january is there's nobody here so we're like we just hold it hold the keenness until after christmas but everything's so, still open so the lifts are still on everything yeah so easy. everything's still running but there's nobody oh. here so um we yeah it is christmas is not normal <laughs> because it, we're just like taxi drivers dealing handing out snacks bringing kids home drawing it out feeding them loads of food and saying just watch tv it's fine just watch tv rest rest so this week i'm just going to try and get as much work done so that's and everybody wants their plans, you know, for Christmas. I've tried to give everybody a recovery over Christmas week. We'll talk about this a bit next yeah. week. So I'll say now that, like, next week we're going to talk a little bit about... We're not going to have a guest because we're giving all the guests a little bit of Christmas holiday. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit. There was a good coaching question that came up from Kelly Sullivan on the Facebook group. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about how we perhaps mix in cross-training with training, how we mix in training with Christmas, what we sort of should be doing this time of year, and you and me are going to sort of talk about what we're doing. Well, you're, going, you're, the, you're the coach. No, no, <laughs> I'll do you. it together. I'll talk. And, <laughs> and, um, but we're both, you're really experienced in how you might juggle stuff, and you're, in, you're also just about maybe to start your journey and do a turbo yeah your turbo life so we're going to talk well about it did pretty much you know as soon as i saw a question i thought oh well, that's kind of similar to what i'm yeah and i spent lots about. of people are scared and you said to me before we started recording when i said oh i tried to go for a run and i did 3k in 30 minutes but it's okay because i'll go and do something different later um and i'm it's taken me it's taken me a long time to not be scared of that cross training and yeah. um to see the benefits and how you fit cross training into the program and i tell you what Gary, I'll tell you this for free. free. That there was no way some of those harder races I did this year, I would have been as strong in the finish if I hadn't done my harder other turbos, harder skis. Cross training works, but it you need to fit it in your program and you need to embrace it. It can't yeah. just be 20 minutes on a gym bike and then you go like oh yeah i'll cross train it yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah, so we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good chat next week all about that. So um uh yeah if you've got any if you are a cross trainer you've got any questions about that jump over on the facebook group uh should we do our christmas competition oh wow. <sighs> i love this one. Oh my god so i mean some stats i think we should do some stats for you gary it was very popular it was very popular 116 comments Wowzers. 63 likes um i think maybe it was my face looking at oh yeah account stats i've got a spreadsheet <laughs> who got more likes me or gary uh <laughs> I think it's my face. I remember that, that snowy picture that I put up. And uh, I sent that to Bryn because the kids were out skiing and he'd said, can you get them? It's too snowy. You were right to pick them up. And I was up a mountain. I was like, not a problem. I'll be there in five. Oh my God. And my hair was so frozen that it snapped off when I, oh. uh, and I got down the mountain. <laughs> right. Anyway, so we had loads of entries and we're each going to choose a winner. Who's your winner? Who's your winner, Gary? Well, you know, Played into my uh, soft spot for Finland, I think, with this one. Uh, Helen Robinson, minus 31. We, you know, before we went on the show, I got a message from Eddie saying how cold it was. Minus six, I think. Moaning. Moaning. <laughs> but wow, I think everything was frozen uh, that day on Helen. And uh, yeah, minus 31, a lovely day in 
Finland. So yeah, you got my vote. So a lovely box of cheap charge goodies will be on its way to you. Maybe not this side of Christmas, but uh, get we'll try. We'll possible. try. Uh, and I chose Mike Hall during the Hard Moors 55, Beast from the East, and he's jumping in joy in the winter. And and I'm a I'm a joyful winter runner. No, I'm not I'm gonna hate it. But my girl looks so happy and uh in the snow, 55 miles. What more could we ask for? I'll I'll make a little post and put those two pictures up on Friday. Don't announce the winner early, Gary. You did that last time. Did I? People have got to listen to the podcast oh to find out okay. if they win. You're ruining our stats. <laughs> yeah, download stats. But what we will do, what we will do, I'll contact you guys on Friday um, directly so we can try and get your cheer charge goodie packs sent out to you before Christmas. What is Christmas without a cheer charge bar? Oh, yeah. Little cranberry cheese charge by it's like though. I'm pretty sure they did a cranberry one. Um, oh, it's festive, isn't it? Yeah. You never guess what though, Eddie. Oh. Um, we've got another. <clears throat> Stop five. it. Yeah. Five They're flooding star. in. I can't cope with them. It's too much. I'm busy. I, did, I went on I Apple podcast just to think, well, I don't think anyone will have done it one. And then before we before I knew it. Fask, oh, I can't even pronounce that uh, username. But anyway, run to the hills. My it's Friday. Read him. You've got to read the username. Faskuskimo. There we Fask- go. Okay, there you go. You did it. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, run to the hills. My Friday treat. I absolutely love this podcast. The format, the chat, and the two amazing presenters. Right there. That's right there. Didn't see electric up. <clears throat> it's just fab. Uh, my favorite of all the running podcasts out there. Oh my goodness me. Warm oh, and footy and keep it real. I especially like the mix of guests and Eddie t- take on juggling the whole life slash training conundrum Not you often ask the questions no one else does especially around female participation in ultras i recommend you to everybody wowzers thanks again thanks so much for that what lovely words kind, kind it's of words. really nice i know this sounds um around to blow our own trumpet but people message me on instagram you know they don't have to or send me a message on facebook and they say you know we really like the podcast we love listening to, to me to it and um so th- that really mean it does mean a lot to us because I know this sounds like we don't put a lot of work into it. <laughs> Some people would say we're just chatting. Isn't it? <laughs> okay, there's a lot of prep. Yeah, there's a lot of pre- hours of preparation goes into this. But yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much. It does mean a lot. It means a lot. We talk about preparation. Um, I noticed the British Trail Running podcast had uh, had a relaunch and had some with, with James and. Oh yeah. Oh, Dan and I, they had some music, intro music. I thought, oh wow, they've gone to town they've here. Got their game. I listen. I've just listened to that because like, when you're not training, you don't listen to your podcasts as much, do you? So I was like, I'm, mainly I listen to it because I like to know what they're doing because they're mates, and I never know. I'm like, what are you going to do? I had the fact I was like, they've upped their game. They've put fancy music on, but they haven't. It's they fine. It's no. just as tight as normal. <laughs> <It's just> as... <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. I love it. They're yeah, funny, yeah, yeah. Dan. Yeah. So funny. And anyone that doesn't know Dan, that is him. He is like that. He is like that. That is yeah. Dan. I mean, I wonder how he survives his daily life, but he's marvellous. I love him. <laughs> love them both. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you liked the show, please like, share, subscribe and follow and head over to iTunes and leave a five-star review. You never know, you might get a shout out. And if I can't pronounce your uh, username, Eddie will help me out. Uh, and that was episode 68. Thanks for listening. My name's Gary Thwaites. I'm Eddie Sutton. And let's run to the hills. Mm-hmm.